Well, shalom, shalom. It's your brother Wild Rum. You're back with another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah. By Hashem, Mahara Kakodash. Barak of the Yahweh. Barak of the Yahweh Shah. Dub honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And shalom to you, Akim and Akwaf, the 144,000 and the one third men, women, and children that will escape the judgment of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. I uh, just got another lesson, just going in the signs of the time, man. Things are happening at a rapid pace, man. So I'm trying to keep up, keep, keep these articles and these videos um, pumping as much as I possibly can. As you see um, right here, it says, Birth prayings, earthquake felt, in, uh, felt by many across Maryland and D.C. Same day as earthquake rattling buildings in New York. So that happened yesterday as well, man. And these things, are, uh, man, they happen at a rapid pace, man. Earthquake after earthquake, man. In the day, it's right here, several state capital, capitals evacuated after bomb threats, man. And there was several across the uh, United States, man. And I think it's, uh, I think I had it. Let me see. Let me see if I can name them real quick. They had a bomb threat and they, uh, they, they had um, closed... Uh, they evacuated a couple of buildings. Let me see if I can find it real quick, man. I know I had it. Damn. There you go. It was a uh, state capital in Georgia, Kentucky, Michigan, Mississippi, and several other other states were evacuated Wednesday after bomb threats. In each state, officials said so. Things are happening at a rapid pace, man. So if they have calling for bomb threats and shit like that, man, things are spiraling out of control. And um, I mean, we can't say when these things are gonna happen, but they're gonna happen, man. And through the spirit and power you have by Shimmy Al I believe it's gonna happen very soon. Now let's check this video out. And we know what the elite are, are trying to get together. And it's pretty much he's gonna tell you what what's coming down the pipe. Which the apostles and elders of Great Millstone been been prophesying about this many years now. Now check this out. Twenty six seconds. <laughs> We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? Where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. And that's the MOTB, the mark of the beast, man. They subliminally telling you what it is without telling you. And as that's that is uh being put in place, now check this out. This has been going viral for the last couple of weeks. The States of America, UNSA, me, is a nation that. Let me run it back. Let me start from the beginning. Echo, what is the United Nations States of America? The United Nations States of America, UNSA, is a nation that formed after the apocalypse and replaced the United States of America. It was formed after the United States of America was scattered and cut off due to the apocalypse. Echo, what apocalypse replaced the United States of America? From 8books.com, a 20 megaton nuclear warhead was detonated high in the atmosphere above Kansas, blanketing most of the contiguous United States and parts of Canada and Mexico with an electromagnetic pulse that damaged nearly all microprocessors and electronic controls beyond repair. Yo, what the fuck is she talking about, man? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so they tell you EMP gonna hit, man. So, I mean, we can't make this up, man. And if you don't think that's gonna happen, man, the spirit is, is putting it out there that people are on edge for something major to come, man. Now, check this out. This is why I think they're going to shut down the grid, dude, because what's going to happen is the unity voice is going to get so loud and then they're just going to shut the whole thing down because it's like flipping the game table over, right? Like, you know, you're going to lose. You're about to lose. You're like, Fuck it. and you flip the game over. And that's what they're going to do, bro. Yeah. They have the ability to do it. You better start thinking about what's going to happen if that happens. So you better start thinking about what's going to happen if that happens, which the men are Lord and women are Lord. Our, our, all, everything we have is invested in your how about Shimmy Yahweh shot, man. Everything we have is invested in the Lord. This is a dream this lady had, and it spooked her. And um, 
Right off the bat, man, she's not in the truth, man. She's not in the truth. So every 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 person that you know speaks of Jesus and and in, in, in the in the Lord and being raptured and all of that, that that's for the elect to understand. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, he said he's gonna pour out his flesh on all all people, man. So all these people are not gonna be in the truth. But the ones that, you know what I'm saying, are paying attention to the, you know what I'm saying, what's going on in the earth. We know when we hear visions and, and hear dreams, we know this is about Yahweh Bashem Al Shah speaking to the elect. Now listen to what she says. Because what she's saying is about the rapture, but we know there's no such thing as a rapture. But we know the men of the Lord and the women of the Lord and children will be taken up. And we will shed these bodies. Now let me play this video and then check this out. And then I just woke up on the craziest dream ever. I came off a water, a seven day water fast and I've had rapture dreams here and there. But Jesus, I never had this before. I've seen like, you know, us going up or whatever. This time I was in my bed and then God showed me, like he showed me the process. He saw, he showed me the souls being taken out. My soul was taken out my body. And he showed me the process and everything, and I saw my soul go, and he just went the whole process of going into heaven, and I made it in. And I was saying, Father, my mom, my mom downstairs, I have to go get her. I'm like, like oh, I'll her. He's like, I can't go back, it's too late. And then he showed me, he allowed me to see what would happen after. I was able to just come back after and watch. When I tell you the minute that we went up, that he showed me a plane, a war plane. War planes in the sky with the Korean flag. There were so many of them. Planes falling off the sky, disaster everywhere, people robbing people, lawlessness. It was complete chaos. I just told my mom what happened. I told my mom, like, he was left behind, and God was mad. He's so angry. Oh my God. I've had dreams before, but never have I been this terrified. Never have I been this terrified. I don't understand how bad it was. There was nowhere to hide. Chaos happened immediately after we left left immediately and when i seen this video a couple of scriptures came to my right off, the, right off the bat was uh what i just read uh yesterday uh with pasta car corn this year the, the whole the hopeful year of jacob's trouble that came that came to mind also revelation with the revelations 11 verse 12 of being called up into heaven in a cloud um you know, just two off the bat, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple more came to my mind when I first posted it. Now, we see that, you know what I'm saying, that she said, um, she's seen the planes, you know what I'm saying, through the spirit, I believe, because there was so many of them, I believe those was missiles, man, that she's seen. And being taken up out of Jacob's trouble. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I, I you know, that's the first thing I thought of, man, being saved out of Jacob's trouble. But I'm going to start here. It's second address. It's second address. Uh, what is it? 16? Yeah, let me start it here. It's second address 16 and verse 70. I'll start it there, right there. Move this over just a little bit because it's kind of big. Um, it says, second address uh, 16 verse 70 it says, For there shall be in every place and in every city a great insurrection upon those that fear you how about Shemiah was shot, man. It says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear you. How about Shem Yahushua, man? So we know that the scriptures say this, they're going to come in like a flood, persecuting the men of the Lord and the women of the Lord, basically the Israelites in a whole, man. It says, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out in their streets. It's like out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. See, the Lord is warning us what to get ready for through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem El Shai, man. We know that we're going to be persecuted for this truth, for the testimony of Yahweh by Shem El Shai. It's all a test from the Lord, man. He says, and they shall be and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. See that? It's going to be a test. It's going to be a test for the men of the Lord, man. Like I said the other day, man, what we believed in, what we, we, we witnessed through the spirit of the Lord, and when we can testify to the Lord, we're gonna, it's gonna come to it's gonna come to pass where we're gonna be tested for everything that we believed in and, and studied for many years, man. And then we're gonna see who who the Lord's chosen, man. If the Lord truly chose you, man, and Lord willing, 
We are chosen because we we, we believed. On the report of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Verse uh, 74 it says, Here, O, be, o my beloved, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. That's the same thing Jacob's trouble was saying in, in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, man. So this is the test, man. And the MOTB is going to be the ultimate test. So our faith is being built up now to, to be able to pass this test the Lord going to present to us. Verse 30, uh, verse 75, it says, But ye, uh, said, Be ye not afraid, nor doubt, for power is your God. See that? The Lord said, Don't be afraid of these things that's coming, man. They're going to persecute us. Yeah, it's, it's written. That's just to try us, man. If you're gonna you gonna, are you gonna turn your back to your how about Shem Yahweh Shah? Or are you gonna in, in keep your integrity, even if it means to die for the Lord, man? That's the test we're gonna be presented with, man. Verse 76 it says, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts. And that's the men of the Lord, man. And the women of the Lord, man. He's gonna be the guide of us. And like I said before, man, we're gonna see all manner of wickedness out here, man. All manner, man. Like never before. But we have a God that's going to be with the men of the Lord to, to uh, walk us in the right direction to go, man. Just like he did the men of old. Verse 76 again, it says, And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah Power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your in your iniquities lift up themselves. So if you don't say you fall short of something, don't, don't get down on yourself, man. Just repent and keep moving because we're coming into those times, man, where your faith is going to be tested. And if you feel like, wow, oh, man, the Lord, I ain't worthy to be saved. Then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to speak it in existence. Speak that in existence and not be saved, man. Because Esau don't want everybody. He don't want us to make it. He know that we are the children of Israel, man. His goal is to not make a, let, let us make it to you. How about Shemmy? I was shy, man. Make it on that chariot. So the, the test that we're going to be presented with, we're not going to get another chance to, to do right, man. We're going to need a chance to get it right. This is going to be the only chance. And that's why I say, man, this is what you should be doing. Getting your faith built up in your how about Shimmy Shah. Not worrying about uh, getting all the, the, the holy days right and celebrating the the um the the Sabbath um to, you know what I'm saying and not making your food and, uh, nah man get your spirit built up in the faith that you have about Shemiah Shah man because we're gonna be tested you know what I'm saying it's cool if you you know what I'm saying you you got your food prepped and you celebrate the Sabbath correctly but that's not gonna matter if you won't pass this test this is this is the Lord said we're gonna practice those holy uh, those holy holidays man. And in practice means you, you're trying to get it right, not saying you're going to get it right every time, man. So focus on getting your faith built up, man. Because we're, we're close to all hell breaking loose, man. We're close to the MOTB pre being presented. This is uh, Isaiah 59, verse 19. It says, So shall they fear the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua shall lift up a standard against him. See that the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him, man. And it may also be that spiritual powers that the Lord present us, you know what I'm saying, protect us with, or the angels be with you. Because the Lord said he's going to be our guide. So we can't say, well, you're going to get spiritual powers when they come in. Like We can't say that for sure. But we're gonna, we know the Lord is going to be with us. So there might be an angel that's, that's protecting you and guiding you, just like uh, in 2nd Ezra said. So we we living in heavy times, man. We're gonna say because the Lord is not gonna let his um his 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 elect nothing happen to his elect. He's not gonna let anything happen to his elect, man. So you know what I'm saying? Don't be oh man, I'm gonna get spiritual powers and no, no, don't worry about that, man. Just worry about the Lord on your side, man. Believing and having faith in the Lord, man. Because the Lord is gonna be our guide in that time. The Lord willing, we do all get you know what I'm saying the spiritual powers, but if it if it don't be that way. And the Lord is guiding us. That's man. That's man. It's even better. You know what I'm saying? Because we know those things are coming. We just can't tell you exactly when, but we know it's coming. So your faith has to be prepared for what we're gonna see, man. And that's the whole gist of this lesson, man. 
Look, every time I get rolling on that on that uh, app, I think it knows I'm I'm screenshotting it and and recording it. But yeah, um, this is Psalms ninety one. Yeah, we we're just man, this is spirit, man. This, this is like we've been studying and preparing ourselves for many years, man. Now the test is coming, man. Now the test that we've been studying for for many years is is here, man. It's going to be presented to us that that exam that you dreaded to take, but through the spirit and power of your heart, by Shemi Shah, we know when this test is over, we're gonna have the kingdom of heaven, man. We'll never have to go through this again. So that's why I say you, you don't worry about. Nothing else, man. Worry about getting built up in the faith and being able to pass that test, man. This is um, Psalms 91 and verse 9. It says, Because thou hast made Yahweh by Shem Shah, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. It says, There shall no evil befall thee. See that? What we've been studying and believing and having faith in for all these years, now the test is going to be presented to us, man. But we made the Lord our refuge and our, and our habitation, man. So now the Lord is going to protect us, man. When the enemy come in like a flood, he says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, man. So we're going to be protected, man. Don't let your sins hold you down, man. If you, if you, you know saying, say, for example, if you just say, for example, you fell short of something, you know you, you went off, just repent, man. Don't keep doing it no more, you know what I'm saying? But don't just don't let that bother in your mind like, damn, man, the Lord is going to judge me. Just repent, man. And you know not to do it anymore. That's about repenting. And we have to repent every day, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to repent every day. It says, verse 11, it says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee and to keep thee in all thy ways. So that See that? The Lord is going to present the angels to us, man, and keep us from the harm's way, man. We're going to keep us out of harm's way, man. It says, he says, they shall bear thee up in their hands, least thou shall, least thou dash thy foot against a stone. See, that, that, that's like, they, uh, just like uh, in the ancient world, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when, when Satan presented to Yahweh Shai, the angels, you know what I'm saying, would, would not let him, hit, you know what I'm saying, um, let his feet uh, hit the stones, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. I think it's in Matthew when he was tested. The Lord, is, that's the test, man, for us. The Lord is not going to let his, our feet get dashed against a stone, man. So this is the ultimate test, man. The ultimate test we're going to be presented with. Verse 13, it says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the lion and, you know what I'm saying, and the snake, the young lion and the, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. It says, Because he hath set his love upon on me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he have known my name. See that? Those that invested in the Lord, man. Call on the right name. Believe in and have faith. You made an investment in the Lord, man. So the investment that you made, he's going to pay, pay you back for what you've done, man. See, we're doing a great work, man. You can't make nobody get what we got, man. This truth, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding. We was chosen to get it. So when we was chosen to get it, now we have to pass a test the Lord's going to present us present to us, man. And the Lord is, is heavy on his name, man. You see, he says, because that because he have known my name. And people know the name, but they don't even call on him, man. How important is that, man? The Lord told you he set his love upon thee. Upon me. It's a lot. So, so man, it's heavy, man, what we got, man. Just don't fumble the ball, man. Don't get weak. Because, you know what I'm saying, Esau going to come with all manner of wickedness, man, to, to shake our faith. But the Lord said he he's going to be, I mean, I wish I had another translation. I wanted another translation. It's just a show. Oh, let me do it. Let me see if it, uh, Psalms 91, I got it. Psalms 91, let me just get down, damn. Let me get down to it. This 13. This is the New Living Translation. It says, uh, uh, Psalms 91, 13, New Living Translation. It says, you will trample upon lions and cobras. See that? You will crush lion, uh, fierce lions and serpents under your feet. 
See that? So so when Esau come in like a flood, we're gonna we're gonna trample on them, man. Like I said, it might be us through the spiritual powers, or it might be the angel that's protecting us, man. Verse uh good news translation says, You will trample down lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes, man. So the Lord is gonna have a protection over us, man. That we won't be harmed, man. See, it's, it's easy to say it, but your faith have to be built up to understand it, though. See what I'm saying? You know, so I can say, well, yeah, you're going to be protected. So that's all you got to worry about. Being, you got to see it in, in your mind. You got you to really think about what's going to happen and contemplate it, man, because the times you're coming into when you see no food, when you see, you know what I'm saying, no, no protection, you see them coming like a flood, your faith has to be built up to know the Lord is with you. You have to know the Lord is with you, man. This is Isaiah 65. And I'm uh, going to get into King James. Isaiah 65 and verse 11. It says, But ye are they that that forsake Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, that forget my holy mountain. And that's two thirds of our people. And that's why I pulled this because when you, when you feel like the Lord is not with you, you're going to be like, you're going to be in the mindset of a two third, man. If your faith is not built up in the Lord, you're going to be in the mindset of two-thirds. And I'm, I'm, man, I'm reading these scriptures for myself as well, man. So if you're in the mindset of two-thirds, man, you, you, you're not going to be worthy to be saved, man. But if you believe and have a faith, the Lord is going to be with you to the end. Then you're going to, you're going to have that spirit and that protection on you already, man. You're not going to fear. But two-thirds of our people are going to fear, man. Verse, uh, Isaiah 65, verse 11 again, it says, it says, be ye... Uh, it's like it. But ye are they that forsake your house by Shem Yahushah, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for a tr for that troop, and that and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. It says, therefore will I number you to the sword, man. And that's because you didn't believe on your house by Shem Yahushah. You believe it on on other gods, Most High Christ, blessing Christ and Jesus. You was believing on them, man. And not believing in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. It says, therefore, will I number you to the sword, man, because you didn't believe. It says, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. And when I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before my eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not, man. So that's why we, we've warned two-thirds of our people, man. We constantly warned them. But if you have the mindset of two thirds of our people, you're gonna be led to the slaughter as well, man. If the if the men of the Lord in the ancient world had these these uh, epistles, these stories for us to look back on, and the Lord did it for them, why not us now, man? Why not for us? He did it in the ancient world. How about now? We're coming to the end of Esau's world, man. The end of End of everything we've we've um, studied in the ancient world. We're coming to the end of that, man. We're coming into the kingdom of heaven, man. This is verse 13. It says, Therefore, thus said Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be, a, be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, man. And that's those, those ones... Two thirds of our people they didn't believe, man. They didn't believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. So when all hell breaking loose, we ain't gonna have you know we ain't gonna have no food either. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna run out. We're gonna run out of food just like everybody else, man. But the Lord said, "His my servants." And let me get this in another translation just to make it even clearer. Living New Living Translation says, "Therefore, this is what the sovereign power Yahweh by Shem Yahushua says." My servants will eat, but you will starve. See that? And who was his servants? Those that believe and have faith and serve him, man. My servant will drink, but ye shall, but you will be thirsty. Two thirds of his people, man, they didn't want to repent. My servant will rejoice, but you will be a sad and ashamed, man. Those that didn't want to repent and come back to you, how about Shem Yahushua? They're going to be sad and ashamed. They're going to be ashamed, man. Because we warned them over and over and over, week after week, day after day of the Lord's return, man. All hell breaking loose. 
And they're going to be ashamed, man. And I mean your family members, man. Your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie. All those people are going to be ashamed. Good news translation, he says, and so I will. So like it says, in the good news translation, let me slow down. I'll be speed up. I don't know why I do that. It says, and so I tell you that those who worship and obey me will have plenty to eat and drink. See that? That's plain, man. He says, but you will be hungry and, and thirsty. They will be happy, but you will be, be disgraced because you didn't want to repent, man. See, that, and that's the spirit that we're going to be in, man. The Lord is going to put that, that mercy upon us, man. We will have a spirit to be happy, man, when this time comes, man, because we know this is it. We know this is it. There's no, there's no turning back from what's coming on earth. There's no turning back. So the faith that we have is going to be in, in, increased. It's going to be increased. Because we know the Lord, like the, like the, she said, she, she called him Jesus, but we know that's your shot, man. And we know what, Isaiah 42, he's going to, going to scream and, and uh, scream out and travail like a um, scream out, scream out um, like a woman in pain. And the Lord is going to be very, man, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just, I can read it and see it in my mind. I'm just like, man, I, I can visualize the Lord being pissed, man, and coming back down and bringing great destruction, man. But this, these things, you can't, you can't make nobody get it, man. The only thing you can do is put the, put the lessons out there. You know what I'm saying? Kind of intrigue somebody's interest. But the Lord got to take over from there. Because you're going to see your auntie, your mom. That's like she said. She said her mom, man, downstairs. And I'm saying, I ain't saying, I don't, she just, what she said in a dream, she said she wanted to go back down. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm assuming an angel or something was with her. She said the Lord, but you know, I'm assuming an angel was with her. And uh, she said she wanted to go down and get her mom, but she, he was saying, we can't do it. It's too late. It's like now we get these scriptures. We put these lessons out. We go on the highways and byways. Now it's getting to a point where it's finna come, become too late. And the people are going to suffer the wrath of you. How about shit me? I was shy, man. A lot of them poured out without mixture, man. <laughs> that fire, boy. Woo, shit. Oh, let me get back to it. This is Isaiah 8, and I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, man. So if somebody telling you that, that, that no destruction is coming, Jacob's trouble is not coming, man. The MOTB, which is the mark, is not coming. Uh, World War Three is not coming, man. That's because there's no light in them, man. They don't see the end of the tunnel, man. They don't see the end of the tunnel. We there, man. Through the Spirit of the Lord, man, we, we see the end of the tunnel, man. We see the Lord cracking them clouds, man, bringing great destruction on the earth, man. And we fear. We fear the Lord, man. That's the whole point of us doing, doing lessons. And, you know, we fear the Lord, man. Because the Lord said, watch, like, I, this, uh, like the lesson I did yesterday, man. Get that blood off your hands, man. Don't walk around with their blood on your hands, man. Do all you can to make it, man. 21, it says, And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry. See that? These people are finna be hungry out here, man. A great famine is coming. It says, And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall frat themselves and curse their king and their power and look upward. See, they're going to they're gonna curse the Lord, man, and look upward to the Lord. Why me, Lord? Why me? That's, what the, that's the spirit they're going to be in, man, because they didn't, want to, they didn't want to hear the Lord while they had time, man. And Jake is a pr procrastinator. Jake a heavy procrastinator. You tell them to do something, should they do it? Nah, give, me, give me 30 minutes, man. Give me an hour. I'll be over there. Or, 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 you know what I'm saying? You know how it is, man. Verse 22, it says, and they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness and anguish. And that's what's coming on the earth, man. You're going to be hungry and you're going to see nothing but darkness, man. No way out, in other words, man. No way out. And they shall be driven to darkness, man. So what's coming on the earth, man, is no way out, man. <laughs> There's no way out. And that's what we're warning you from the Lord, man. The Lord is going to shake his hand over Babylon the great, man. And there's not going to be any way out. 
So to suffer the wrath of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, I don't want to do it. I don't want to suffer the wrath of the Lord. I don't want to see the fire. I don't want to feel the fire of the Lord. Let's get this, man. And this is Elijah. And the Lord was with him, man. And these stories are written for our learning, man. For our faith to be built up, man. This is uh, 1 Kings 17 and verse 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As Yahweh by Shem Yahweh power of Israel, liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years. But according to my word, and the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh came unto me, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Shari. Uh, sh sh let me get that just to make sure I pronounce it correctly. Sharith. Cherith. Sherith. Verse 3 again, it says, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. See that? So the Lord had the ravens feed Elijah while he was, when he was, in, the, it was in the wilderness, man. And like I said, we, we, I can't tell you, well, you're going to be somewhere where you're going to have a raven feed you. No, I can't say that. But Lord, just know the Lord, can ha he has every access to feed you, man. I should have got that. There was another uh, another uh, story where um, he took, um, oh, man, what was the story? Uh, where he took, uh, I think it was Habakkuk by the head, and, and, and he took um, took Daniel food in the lion's den. Oh, man, I, might, I might have to get that. I want to make sure I don't make it too long, but I'm, I might have to get that one, man. That's a, that's a heavy one. But, I, yeah, I just, we just pulled this, man, because this, this is something that, Two thirds are not going to believe. Oh, man, how a bird going to feed me, man? The Lord, man, the Lord is amazing, man. The Lord can make anything feed you, man. Verse four again, it says, "And it shall be that uh, that thou shalt drink of the brook." And see, the Lord said, "It' going to be we're going to be we're going to eat and drink, man, just like Elijah." He says, "And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I command the ravens to feed thee there." So he went and did according unto the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Sherath, that is before Jordan. So he, he did what the Lord said to do. And that's what the Lord said, I'm going to be your guide. So he's going to guide us to where he wants to be, man, to drink and to eat. He says, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh. In the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. See that? They fed him <laughs> breakfast and lunch, man. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. But the point is, he was fed by a raven, man. He was fed by a bird, man. Breakfast and, uh, breakfast and lunch, man. He was fed by a raven, breakfast and lunch, man. So how amazing is that? The Lord had commanded a, a, a raven to come and feed him, man. So the Lord is, man, the Lord is heavy, man. There's nothing impossible for the Lord to do, man. There's nothing impossible for the Lord to do. And we're coming into those times where the miracles are going to happen again, man. This is uh, 1 Kings 18 and verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua came to Elijah, in the third year, saying, "Go, go show my, go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth." And Elijah went and showed and showed himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Syria, Samaria, Salakia, and it's going to be a sore famine here in Babylon the Great. Now check this out. He says, "And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor." Of his of of the, of his house, like it, it says now Obadiah feared Yahweh by Shem Yahushua greatly, for it was so that when Jezebel 
cut off the prophets of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water, man. So when uh, uh, um, Jezebel wanted to kill the prophets, he had Obadiah hide them, man, and feed them bread and water, man. And it was a great famine in the land of Samaria, man. So the Lord is going to do the same exact thing. He's going to hide us from all this chaos, man. He's going to feed us, and he's going to make sure we drink, man. So this is the spirit that we have to be in, man, knowing the Lord can do whatever he wants to do, man. But Lord willing, he do it for us. You know what I'm saying? Two-thirds are not going to get this, man. Two-thirds are not going to get this, man. But if you understand and have faith in the Lord, man, he's going to honor, honor you just like he said he was, man. Just like he said he was. This is um, 1 Kings 19, man. And these, you can get to all these, man, read the whole stories. And I'm just getting to pretty much getting the points, man. Because the Lord fed them, man. Great famines in the land, he fed them. He made a raven feed Elijah, man. When, when he had no, you know what I'm saying? He, the, what the Lord told him to go, he went. And he, had, he was prepared. He was, and he had a raven bring him food, man. So we coming in them time, man. You, you, you don't have to believe the unbelievable, man. You have to believe the unbelievable. And see, our people are so uh, uh, accustomed to this Western world, they, they don't believe in the Lord, man. If they can't see it, they can't believe it, man. But the, the Spirit of the Lord came to us with the truth, man, for, for us to believe something way out, man. See what I'm saying? So, so what's the, man, for us to believe something way out, something unbelievable, man, the Lord put the Spirit on us to understand it, man. Let's get this one. This is uh, 1 Kings 19. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. He says, and when he saw that the that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he and he requested for himself that he might die now check this out and said it is enough now O Yahweh by Shem take my life take away my life for I am not better than my father and as he lay laid asleep under the juniper tree behold then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. See, that he went away in the wilderness, man, where he couldn't eat, man. He was ready to die, man. But the Lord was with him, man. That's the whole point of me getting the scripture, man, because the Lord was with him, man. He had an angel come and prepare food for him, man. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man, we're going to be some, it's going to be some way out stuff, man, that you're going to see real soon, man. And know the Lord is with you. Verse 5 again, he says, And he laid under... He slacky. It says, and he, as he, and as he laid, and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him, and said unto him, Arise, and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked bacon, on the coals. So he had food, a cake baked, for him. And you know, like I, mean, I ain't gonna get into how we did in the ancient world. But um, but this is, you just imagine, man. What? Let's, let's matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Let me finish it up, then I get it, man. Let's see what a cake bacon, bacon is. Verse six again. It says, and he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals, and a crust, and a cru a cruise of water at his head. So he had a had a cruise of water. Now let me get those, man. So we just make it plain for somebody that's young and don't. Looking at these words, let's get it real quick just to make sure we um, edify 
on you. I mean, it ain't really too much. You should know what it, the water and food, man. That's basically what it is, but we'll see what it is exactly. And I think it was 19 and verse 6. It's H57, H5796, 5692. A disc or cake of bread. So it was bread, a cake of hot stone, cake baked on hot stones. So it was just bread, man. Well, let's get back. Let me get let me get the crest. A jar, <laughs> jug of liquids. So yeah, <laughs> so the angel had him had him set up, didn't he? He had him set all the way up, man. Said, man, we man, man, the water how about Shemel Shah for this word, man? His wisdom is understanding, man. So let me make sure I pronounce this correctly. Cruise. Cruise. I said crest. Cruise. Verse six again. It says, and he looked. And behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he, he, he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. It says, And he arose and did eat and drink. And went in in the strength of the meat of that meat forty days and forty nights. See that he was fed by the angel and was full for forty days and forty nights. He didn't have to eat again, man. He said he was in strength for forty days and forty nights unto her of the mount of uh, mount of power, man. So the angel fed him. And he was able to have power and strength for 40 days and 40 nights, but he ain't had to eat again. See, that's the spirit the Lord is going to put on us, man. See, miraculous and amazing things, man, that's coming to us, man. Amazing things are coming to us. And our faith has, have to, has to just have to be built up in the Lord, man. Let me get one more and I'm going to end it. But that was just, this is this, this, man, Elijah just went through, man, it's the things we're going to go through, man. And Lord willing, we endure to the end, man. This is Psalms 113. Well, look at that. As soon as I get to the last one, let me get that last scripture, man, and I'm going to end it. Psalms 113. I don't know why I stick like that. And every time I study and pull up all the scriptures on it, it don't never, it don't never freeze up. This last one, man. This is Psalms 113 and verse 1. It says, Praise ye, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Praise ye, O ye servants, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Praise the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. And that's why we always may say, put that vibration out there, man, of calling on the name of the Lord, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, man. It says, Blessed be the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua from this time forth and forevermore, man. Because the Lord is going to do some amazing things for the elect, man. It says, from this, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua's name is to be praised, man. We ain't going to be praising no most high Christ blessed or Jesus or Christ. Now nah, we're going to call him his true name, man. His name is to be praised, man. Verse 4 says, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua is a high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, our power, who dwelleth on high, man? Who is like unto our Lord, man? So why not reference and, and show show our um our reference to the Lord, man? And believe and have faith in that name, man. He's high above the, all the nations, man. Every let me say this real quick, man. All the nations want our power, man. All the nation wants to be Israelites. I don't care if it's the Hamites, the Edomites, the, the Chinese, Jap all the nations want to be us. And we have an opportunity to be us, be our real selves, and people don't want to make, people don't want to even be their own damn self, man. And that's a, that's that's the 
<sighs> that's a that's a bug that spirit, man. The Lord put on our people, man. That they would desire to be other people besides who they are, man, and who our Lord is, man. We got the, we got the <laughs> we got the Most High Power, Yahweh by Shimmy Shine. People want to be uh, Muslims and shit, man. That man, that's a man, that's man, a Christian. Man, that's a bugged out spirit, man. Man, the water you have, you how about Shimmy Alshai? He chose to get this word, man. Damn. Because <laughs> what come with those other gods comes destruction, man. So those who believe in being a Muslim and being Christian or uh, being Buddhist or whatever, man, it comes with a heavy judgment, man. Not serving a true and living power, man. Let me read this for, for again. I'm going to end it, man. It says, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, our power who dwelleth on high, man? Who is like the Lord, man? Man, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven, that are in heaven and in earth. He says, he riseth, he riseth up the poor from the dust and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. He maketh the burden, the, bur the burden woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother to children. Praise you, how about Shimei Hoshai, man? Because in the ancient world, our women, all the only thing they desire, they, they, they desire to be mothers, man. And they desire to be housekeepers, man. Keepers of the home. That was their desire, man. And that's why the Lord said our, our mothers was joyful with children, man. But that's another lesson for another, another day, man. I'm going to end it there, man. Lord willing, was edifying. Shalom, shalom.